The Oregon Health Authority is pleased to announce new guidelines. Well, is pleased to announce that the CDC has approved new guidelines for the Moderna booster. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Um, just make this a bit bigger. Effective immediately, adults who received the Moderna vaccine as part of their primary series only have to wait five months before getting a booster. <whistles> only have to wait. Only have to wait. That's only quite have a to wait. <laughs> Yay! That is the update that I was looking for because I was just chomping at the bit. Waiting for the waiting, waiting to be able to rush out because that is definitely what everyone wants when they get a vaccine. How soon can I get my next installment? Well, so if we were, you know, as long as we're just idly wishing for wonderful things, then wouldn't it be great if we had a vaccine that you only had to wait a week till your next booster? I think so. I don't want to have to wait five months. That seems like a long time in this modern world. Waiting is not fun. We all know that. Waiting is hard. Yes. Yeah. No, it's a, it's an amazing construction. And you mm-hmm. can imagine that whoever came up with that, you know, they really, they earned six months worth of pay for that <laughs> inversion of reality that they have now perpetrated on the public. In which time they'll have to get two boosters. <laughs> if they're even getting boosters. I mean, I hate to be cynical, but. At the Oregon Health Authority, I suspect they are. Yeah, the Oregon Health Authority. Yeah, we're. Yeah. remote enough from the centers of power that they probably are. Yeah, this is a this is a low financial incentive outpost out here. Yes. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, I forgot. Uh, when we were talking about <clears throat> that incredible testimony from Walensky and Fauci, I wanted to point out this piece written by a, a friend of ours, uh, Jumi Kim, in her substack, Let's Be Clear, which is called I Was Deceived About COVID Vaccine Safety. Um, she starts by talking about um, having been vaccinated um, with the Moderna vaccine in May of 2021. And then this is an incredibly long article and it is incredibly thorough. And first she defines Consilience. She basically goes after the. Um, she doesn't do this explicitly. I think I did read the whole article this morning, but it's very very long. Um, I don't think she goes after directly the argument that um, that uh, uh, tri- cri- cri- trials. Um, randomized control. Randomized trials. control trials. I was thinking critical theory. How, How could you have forgotten randomized, randomized control? Well, they are the gold standard of everything. Uh, well, critical theory is also the gold standard. Is I it guess not? it is. Yeah. So randomized control trials being basically the standard of evidence um, is uh, is absurd. And really, what you're hoping for is a lot of different kinds of evidence pointing to the same thing. And you know, RCTs, when done well, um, do of course provide an overwhelming amount of evidence, but it's still one. Kind of signal. When designed well and executed well. Right. And yeah, what they yeah, do. Done, there's a lot hiding in done there. Go right. On. But yeah. what they do, what randomized control trials do, the reason that there is even a basis for a claim that they are the gold standard is that they are very good at isolating weak effects and making them visible, right? Mm-hmm. By controlling for other, yep. all the other things that might lead you, that mis, might mislead you in this direction. Yep. Right. But I would also point out that this is a classic variant on the idea that science is the strongest method we have have for figuring out what is true, Mm -hmm. but it is also a fragile method. It is vulnerable to things like market forces. It is not robust to them. And so randomized controlled trials are very good at finding a weak effect and making it visible, but they are also fantastically gameable. Yes. That is to say, you can design trials to succeed and you can design them to fail irrespective of the thing that is being tested. And um, I know it's going to sound like I'm becoming cynical, but the more one digs and the more one understands about the way the pharma game is played, the more you realize that this idea that we all carry, that this is the gold standard, may indeed be about the fact that they are gameable. And therefore, if you're a you know a company that wishes to sell compounds and get them inflicted on patients, then a gameable mechanism, a gameable metric is exactly what you're looking for, yeah. right? Because Especially if you're allowed to stop them short. Well, right. The, yeah. the point is, look, we don't like it this way. We think that medicine is science and medicine should be scientific. But the point is the idea that this compound is effective at 
limiting the harm of this disease. Yep. That is a narrative. Mm -hmm. And the point is that narrative is founded on what we think of as evidence. But if you have a gameable kind of evidence, then the point is, oh, I can link this compound, which I just so happen to have a, you know, intellectual property rights to, to this disease, which I might broaden the definition of so that more people appear to have it. And then, wow, boy, a lot of this substance is going to end up in a lot of those people and a lot of cash is going to flow in this other direction. And the point is, well, who amongst us really doesn't think that those kinds of incentives and opportunities are on the mind of these corporations who do this? Yeah. We are all, we are all privy uh, to falling prey to incentives, all of us, and we all do fall prey to incentives. And pointing out incentives is not the same thing as pointing out a uh, possibility of conspiracy. And also um, <clears throat> those who point out incentives are thus not inherently engaging in conspiracy theory. So Jumi um, lays out her case, um, again, a very long case, and one which I think is eminently shareable with those who are skeptical of the position uh, that the vaccines may not be all that they are cracked up to be. If you could show my screen here, Zach, um, by saying <clears throat> basically the consilience that, that looking at multiple kinds of data and at the point that they align, concluding something from them aligning um, is a rather excellent way of assessing vaccine safety here. And she says, I've compiled multiple pieces of evidence to argue that injuries from the COVID vaccines are grossly underreported. These include one, testimonies from doctors and nurses, two, testimonies from the vaccine injured, three, evidence from medical records or official databases of adverse events, four, evidence from the vaccine trials themselves, five, plausible mechanisms of action, six, evidence from animal studies, seven, evidence of past wrongdoing, wrongdoing by pharma, eight, evidence of corruption or undue influence in our health institutions, and bonus, explanations for why we are not hearing about this in the media. Each section, she continues, of this article could be its own book, <clears throat> and indeed, she's got a ton of links in here. But um, but it's not it's not even complete, as as will always be the case. So, I highly recommend this as as a, basically a, a clearinghouse of arguments um, and evidence, um, and encourage you to to share it with people who say, "What are you talking about?" Of course, they're safe. So I would just add to this. Um, we are all built to be logical, not to a fault, right? There are places where logic will mislead you because you don't have enough information. And so the logical conclusion you reach is actually less good than your intuitive conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, but we are all built to do logic because it served our ancestors to deploy that tool frequently, especially when there's something complex and difficult to uh, navigate or arrived because then you could, you could at least... Uh, try to parse out what was taking place. But this gives you lots of kinds of checks that you can do on whether something makes sense, right? Yeah. So one check I often do is what would have to be true for this thing that I think is true to actually not be, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How like, how robust mm -hmm. is this piece of information? It's like the mirror image of a prediction. Right, it, it, it's a I spot. Mean, it is a prediction, but it's but it's not. It's like a negative prediction. I think the 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 right um, the right analogy is it's a checksum. Right? You know, a checksum mm -hmm. is if you've gotten yeah. a program. Let's say you've gotten a security minded uh, program. You've downloaded it from the internet. Well, how do you know that somebody didn't give you? a version of the program in which they've got a backdoor installed and they just made the website look like the real website and you downloaded a program that isn't what you think it is, right? Yep. Well, you can do a checksum, right? Which takes some set of things from within the program that the originator of the program uh, built that if anybody modified it, wouldn't add to the same number, right? And so the point is you can say, well, I don't know why the thing I downloaded doesn't match the thing that uh, the manufacturer is distributing, but I know I don't want to use it because the checksum right. didn't match. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so anyway, there are lots of things you can check that way. And this is just kind of a checksum on- Isn't that a little bit of a modern day shibboleth? It's like a technical- Yeah. It's a, it's a numer numerological, which is wrong because numerology is a weird right. something, but it's like- It's a it's numeric. A, it's, it's, it's a numeric shibboleth. Yeah. And actually, sorts. This, this, is, this is- No, I think this is really yeah. good because yeah. actually what it is, is 
Um, you know, so for those of you who don't know, shibboleth is a biblical term, and the shibboleth is a shibboleth. Shibboleth <laughs> is a term that you could pronounce various different ways, but you could recognize people who really were part of your group because they would pronounce it the same way. And if they pronounced it shibboleth or whatever the alternatives would be, you'd know something was up. Yep, you're not um, you're not of us. You're not with us. But the thing about a checksum, or and I assume there are other mechanisms that work like this. The thing about it is there are an indefinitely large number of ways to be wrong and only one to be right. So it's mm -hmm. like a turbocharged kind yeah. of shibboleth, right? Yeah. Um, well, I, th I mean, I think that's true for shibboleth too. Shibboleth, shibboleth, you know, there's an indefinite number of ways to, to say it wrong. And maybe it's not indefinite. <laughs> it's okay. not indefinite. Oh, I see. It's, I see. I see. It, it, yeah. It's okay. more than one. I see. It, it, there's a plurality, uh, but it's not indefinite. Yeah. I see the distinction. Yeah, yep. Exactly. Um, you were going somewhere? <laughs> I'm already here. <laughs> I've been here since the beginning no, of the podcast. Weren't you going somewhere? <laughs> oh, wasn't I going somewhere? Well, I guess what I was going to say is there are lots of ways that you can kind of look at a body of evidence and say, mm. does this look like something somebody might have constructed for my mm. benefit so I would reach a wrong conclusion? Or does this look like the way evidence actually works in the world where even if I come at it different ways, I come to the same place because it's actually true, Yeah. right? Yeah. And that's so powerful, right? Mm -hmm. If I think I know something... And then I'm working on some other problem, and it leads me right back to the same yeah. deep truth. It's well, like, oh, well, now I have two reasons to believe it, not one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some things just canceled. Yeah, yeah. right, exactly. So yeah. it's just a kind of, it's a kind of. Uh, oh, and isn't that? That's just so rewarding. It's just like that's 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 one of the, that's one of the reasons to do it, right? To do this kind of work is to end up with things canceling and to be returned back and go, oh, okay. This does fit. Absolutely. It fits after all. Absolutely. And, and it's a different kind of reward to be like, oh, it doesn't fit. These are different things. I, there's an error somewhere. I don't know where it is yet. Uh, but, um, you know, both of those have reward. But So we were headed to the Hereticon conference in Miami. We, we didn't get to go because of, uh, because of our encounter with COVID. But nonetheless, yeah. one of the things I wanted to do at Hereticon, which is gonna, was going to involve a whole you know, audience full of very smart people, most of whom uh, would not have been deeply steeped in how to think about uh, COVID or vaccine safety or yeah. early treatment or anything. The thing I was going to say to them, which I should probably write up or something, was um, you in the public, I believe, are subject to an anamorphic illusion. Mm. Anamorphic illusions are... You've all seen them. You just don't know the word, probably. Like those chalk drawings on sidewalks that look like a giant chasm has opened up in the sidewalk. It's extremely compelling. It's very hard to convince your mind you're not looking into a giant chasm. But what you may or may not realize is that it looks like that from exactly one location, right? And so the exchange that the artist has made is that from this vantage point, I can make a very compelling rendering of something with a lot of 3D content, you can look at it from any other direction, and then you get some weirdly distorted thing that doesn't. It makes no sense. Doesn't it's incoherent. add up, yeah. right? It's incoherent. It's at least stretched, and it doesn't look like a three D thing. It looks like a crazy thing. Yeah. And my point to the audience was going to be: you are the subject of an anamorphic illusion surrounding public health, mm. and the only reason <laughs> that that's working is because you're standing where they expect you. Yeah. And the point change is, change your vantage point for just a little. Right. If you step three feet to your right, three yeah. feet to your left, you'll begin to see what we're talking about. Mm. If you continue to stand there, we're going to sound crazy. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, in any case, I think what Jumi is up to here is a very good indication of. Look, I believe something that yes, you will be told the public health officials have ruled out long ago. Right. Um, but doesn't it look like a real object? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't. You know. Look at all of these kinds of evidence. Right. I might be able to show you something, a picture of a rock, and tell you all about it. Yeah. And somebody might challenge that it's not what I say it is. But it's different than being yeah. able to hand you a rock, and you can look at it from any angle you like. And yeah. But my, you know, but my doctor said that he saw, yeah, that's one doctor. Okay, but 10 doctors said that they saw, yeah, but it's just doctors. Okay, but these people said that they were injured. Okay, but it's still just people talking. Oh, well, we got medical records and, and VARES. Oh, well, but VARES is flawed. 
Uh, we got the vaccine trials themselves. Oh, well, I don't know what I say about that. We got plausible mechanisms of action, animal studies, pasteurized doing by pharma, evidence of corruption. She's got so many. She's just laid it out so cleanly, all the different kinds of evidence that we've got. And um, and it's and it's still not complete. Right. And so the point yes. is, what would have to be true for the analysis that she presents to just simply be backwards, right? Right. All of these things would need a special explanation for what had gone wrong. And the point is, you can look at, at what she says and you can say, look, I don't have any ability to evaluate this kind of evidence. I know mm -hmm. nothing about it. Yeah. But then this other kind of evidence I can evaluate. Right. So maybe the one that I can't evaluate, she's wrong, but... If she's not wrong about the one I can evaluate, why do they point in the same direction, right? right. So it's it's that style of how do you how do you exactly. how do you think in a messy environment is, mm -hmm. is kind of the thing, which is why you and I always say welcome to complex systems, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it requires a different style of thought. And you know, no surprise, she's um, I actually don't know exactly her background, but she's trained as a biologist.